Any newcomer who joins a molecular biology lab will undoubtedly be asked to design, construct, or modify a plasmid. But what exactly is a plasmid? And why is it so useful in the lab? At their most basic level, plasmids are small, circular pieces of DNA that replicate independently from the host chromosomal DNA. Compared to the millions or billions of bases that make up the entire genome, plasmids typically contain a couple thousand at most. They are relatively small, stable, and easy to manipulate. So where do plasmids come from? In nature, they're found in microbes, like bacteria. In the 1940s, scientists began noticing that there are heritable cytoplasmic factors that could be transferred between cells, but there was no consensus on what they were or what to call them. It wasn't until 1952 that Nobel laureate Joshua Lederberg coined the term plasmid, a combination of the words cytoplasm and id, Latin for it. In nature, plasmids often contain genes that provide a competitive advantage, giving its host bacterium an ability that it didn't have before. These benefits include antibiotic resistance, the wherewithal to survive in harsh environments, and even the ability to wage war to gain an environmental advantage. But plasmids aren't just useful to bacteria. Because they're incredibly easy to manipulate, they've also made themselves indispensable to life scientists and bioengineers. Plasmids created in the lab are known as constructs or vectors. To understand what plasmids can do, let's break down its parts using a plasmid map. All plasmids contain an origin of replication, or ORI. It tells the plasmid where to begin replication. Plasmids often contain genes that are advantageous for survival. One of the most common, naturally occurring types of genes is antibiotic resistance. When used in the lab, antibiotic resistance genes allow scientists to separate out cells that contain plasmids from those that don't. The wonderful thing about plasmids is that they can be easily engineered and can introduce foreign DNA into cells through electroporation or other methods. Many plasmids are designed so scientists can insert genes they want to be expressed in organisms. One way to do this is through restriction sites. Restriction enzymes recognize these sites and cut out the present gene like molecular scissors. Then, a different gene can be inserted into the site. Often, these restriction sites are located in what's called a multiple cloning site, a short segment of DNA that contains several restriction sites. This adds flexibility to the cloning process. How is the inserted gene expressed? A promoter site, which is upstream of the inserted gene on the plasmid, acts as a green light that allows gene transcription. RNA polymerase binds to the promoter moving along the strand. As it moves along the strand, it creates a new strand of mRNA expressing the gene. The plasmid cloning process is very versatile, so there's a whole array of genes that scientists can introduce into the cell. For example, if you wanted to track a specific species of bacteria in a population, you could insert a GFP-expressing gene into a plasmid and transform it into your bacterium. Your cells will fluoresce, making them easier to find. Or if you're trying to study the effect of a specific protein on a phenotype, you could insert the gene of interest into the plasmid, move this into a cell, and look for changes in the cell. We hope you enjoyed this video in our Plasmids 101 series. To catch our newest videos, subscribe to the AdGene YouTube channel and visit blog.adgene.org for more plasmid info.